I felt like everybody's mother. <laughs> I also didn't have a body. And I was like, I don't have a body, but I know, I know I have a body. And I know that this body has to pee really bad. <laughs> Welcome to Welcome Inner to Archaeology. Inner... <laughs> oh, I should have done that at the same time. Why did I stop? It would have been so cute. And like we've planned so it. <laughs> Welcome to Inner Archaeology. Mm-hmm. I'm Emily. I'm Sarah. Yeah, we're so glad. Let's talk about drugs. Drugs. <laughs> drugs. If you um, if you are part of our Patreon, uh, we actually have a hilarious episode on there where we like first start digging into it, but I'm like excited <laughs> to do it here too. Um, because I think yeah. it's just something fun to kind of, um, unpack. I think it's important. Yeah. First yeah. of all, it's like a conversation and when we mean drugs, we mean specifically psychedelics, but mm-hmm. yeah, we want to talk about psychedelics today. And I think it's important because it's just a conversation that's like, I mean, it's happening like yeah. in the world at large right now. Mm-hmm. And, um, It's complicated, especially Mm -hmm. for somebody who's like, I don't know, I feel like struggled with addiction. Yeah. Uh, It's something, I don't know, it's just complicated. Yeah. Because there's a lot of stigma attached to it. There's a lot of- So much stigma. A lot Mm -hmm. of belief Mm -hmm. systems attached to it, a lot of even like shame Mm -hmm. attached to Mm -hmm. it. But I love that today we're getting to experience people truly studying the scientific benefits and the like- therapeutic benefits of psychedelics it's amazing Mm -hmm. that you can Mm -hmm. go to like Colorado and have somebody help treat your complex PTSD with psilocybin and like have all these experiences and I think it's just I don't know I love I love that that's happening you know and there's the whole conversation on like the war on drugs that's a different conversation but Mm -hmm. I love that like yeah it's becoming something that's a little bit more talked about and I'm glad we're going to be talking about it more today yeah, because it was, like, massively vilified, especially by our parents' generation. Like, I know totally. my parents are like, hell no, but now they're, like, <laughs> coming around to the idea of it being, like, yeah. potentially acceptable. Like, my mm-hmm. mom jokes about going on ayahuasca retreats now, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> let's go. I've never done ayahuasca. It's, I'm definitely, like, know. a little scared of it. Yeah, it's, like, same, full same. on. But the fact that she's, like, thinking about it, I'm like, yeah. It's just Because it just like, means a shift in beliefs, normal. right? Totally. I love that. I, um, my first experience with psilocybin, I had like, I had not done anything until I was in my thirties. My thirties was like early thirties was the first time I even smoked weed. Um, and so I was like, kind of all happened like all at the same time. Like I had my like first Mm -hmm. experience with marijuana, which is a psychedelic, right? That can be very psychoactive, especially Mm -hmm. if you eat a cookie that you don't know how much weed is in it and then you watch yep. Interstellar yep. and then you feel like you've discovered how like the universe <laughs> works maybe um it can be psychedelic then but <laughs> when so I kind of like I had I had had only a few experiences with um marijuana and then I like did this like massive mushroom trip and it it was life altering I think it ultimately mm-hmm. in like a really powerful, really good way. Um, mm. It was very intense because it was what I like to call a heroic dose of mushrooms. <laughs> 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 Not for the faint of heart. I don't know who was giving it, it to me, but it was a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do you want to like dig in and like tell our stories about it or do we want to like... Yeah, let's do that. I Yeah, let's do that. Why don't you start with that one? Okay. Well, Yeah. Kick that, kick it off with that I'll guy. Kick it off, okay. Um, so again, like very new to being well, in like a. Is this the first time you did mushrooms? Mm-hmm. Context, because this is all important. I feel like context is so important. Oh yeah, this is the first time because you like you need to know if you've like done it other times and how it went because totally. like a previous time can make you really scared of it. Definitely. <laughs> so it's like, so we need like all context. So mm-hmm. first time you're doing mushrooms. First time. Did I really think it was only, out. it was, <laughs> it was, an, especially I now know I'm very sensitive to mushrooms. Like I actually don't yes. need a ton uh. to have like a really like intense experience. This is something um, I learned about drugs like pretty early on and yeah. alcohol that like whatever everybody else is taking, I need to take like a third mm. <laughs> like because yeah. I'm also very sensitive and yeah. I don't know. I think that's why it's like 
I don't know. Impor- I, I want to be able to like have conversations with my kids about drugs because it was just like not something we talked about. Totally. And then mm-hmm. you're just like left to figure it out on your own, right? right. <laughs> I'm going to be like, listen, safe. child, yeah. if you're going to experiment with mushrooms, don't take an eighth right out the gate. Oh, God. <laughs> like- oh, my God. No. <laughs> but that's what kids in my high school, I mean, my college Holy were shit. doing is they would be like one dose is a whole eighth. And then they would be like out of their mind. And I was so scared. I didn't do that. Anyway, oh sorry. God, back that's to your terrifying. Story. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. I think it is so important. To, just like, just like it's important to talk to your kids about sex. It's going to be like, they're going to encounter this stuff because we live in a world that these stuff exists. It's so important to be able to create conversation. So I like that, that yes. we're doing this on this podcast, creating conversations. Yes. Um, but yeah, the context really was just I, I had only very recently even smoked weed. So I was very new to everything. And um, there was a group of friends and we were all together and we were on the um, deck of the house that I lived in. There was this like back deck down by the woods. And mm-hmm. so a great place. It was a really lovely like lots place. Lots of green, lots of nature. Yeah, it's being lovely. out in nature. Yes. And so I don't know whose idea this was, but somebody <laughs> – Gave everybody like a small dose of ecstasy, oh. like, and then Uh-oh. took the mushrooms. That's very different. So <laughs> I don't recommend that. Apparently, it's called candy flipping, and it just is it, – it, they're two such – two different feelings that they don't work. They It was not – so that's what I was like – the onset was like this first this like – which I'd never done ecstasy before. It was that, that was that sounds lot. insane. Dude. Yeah, that was like a lot. <laughs> That's so, so much. I, I the don't first time to do that. that. No. The both of those things is too much. Um, no, don't. Are you do, okay? I think so. Do don't you come do out okay? I in the story. I think so. I don't know. It took okay, me like yeah. it took me like a couple months to process what happened, but. So don't do that, <laughs> kids. Like, like for experienced don't people only, up. maybe. I don't know. Yeah, not smart. I don't, it was just like dumb and like I, I Oh my didn't god, know. I can't I was an even idiot. imagine. Anyway, so that was a weird onset, but pretty quickly the mushrooms like overpowered like the ecstasy feeling. And mm-hmm. I was having all your good like visuals, right? Like it was everything was like very you felt very I don't know. You feel really connected to like Mother Earth, like the mm-hmm. Earth and the mm-hmm. planet and the sky and the ground and the trees. Everything's like alive and communicating to you. And so I was having a really beautiful experience with just being on planet Earth. Um, I felt very held. Uh, mushrooms also feels very feminine in energy to me, whereas mm. marijuana feels very masculine in energy to Ooh, me. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. And like it feels huh. mushrooms feels very nurturing but but not uh doesn't not like I take g- giving it to you easy either like i i feel like huh. it, there was this moment where you kind of have to like surrender or i've experienced that you have to like oh, surrender yeah. to this the is experience important. yes and but it's like you surrender and you know you're being held but but it can be like challenging so at the time when i had was doing this, having this experience, my mother was, um, had recently been diagnosed with like pretty Mm. aggressive breast cancer. And so I was already kind of contemplating her death and just like death in general. And Mm. Mm -hmm. psychedelics tend to kind of like highlight your quote unquote demons, which is a, I think an aggressive way to talk about just the things that are like going on inside, maybe the things you've shut Mm -hmm. down a little bit. And so, um, what started- and also they help you – they also are, like, really known for um, tending to, like, tap into, like, end-of-life stuff mm-hmm. as well. Like, yeah. that's, like, something that, I don't know, fascinates me uh, so about, like, a lot of the research is, like, you know, specifically using this for people who are, like, coming – to accept the end of life. So it, like, makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. you've got this whole thing going on with your mom, mm-hmm. this – and this is what mushrooms does to this people. Is is, it's like <laughs> highlighting this. And I remember I was like with my group of friends and people started like acknowledging, I don't know, this like mother energy within me. It was really interesting. I started embodying what I felt like was like the mother of the universe. Okay. So I remember <laughs> one of the girls like came over and laid in my lap like she was a baby. And looked up at me and like touched my cheek, and she was like, "I feel like you're the mother I always wanted," or something. She said, and I was just like, 
I'm like, I don't have a body. I don't know how to process this. Um, but <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I also was, just like hearing people talk about being on mushrooms, like always makes me giggle. I don't know what it is. Cause it's and, like, it's always, it's always so similar. Do you know yes, what I mean? Like it's these different, thematic but it's similar. Things. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. It's different, but it's similar. And so it just like always makes me giggle. Cause I'm yeah. just like, I, oh, I know that's a mushroom exactly thing what to you're say. talking yeah, about. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that was a mushroom thought for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you're the mother I you're never the mother had. I know, and I'm just kind of like <laughs> contemplating I death. I don't have a body. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know. I didn't have a body. Um, it was very like, but it wasn't like I, I felt like I was really along for the ride. I wasn't like fighting it. I think when you hear of people having like bad trips, a lot of times mm-hmm. that is associated with like fighting it and resistance and can create a, I can't imagine. I, I like my second mushroom trip, I had a little bit more of that bubble of like, Ugh. but, um, but anyway, going back to this first one, I started feeling like I was embodying the mother of the universe. I started feeling like I was experiencing mother all, vibes. all of the loss all of the joy, all of the mm. like sorrow of like every mother that had ever existed. It just like started, I felt like I had like plugged into this like vein, uh, some sort of like um, neural network of all the mothers. <laughs> and and it was Whoa. just like, it was so cosmic and massive. And I, I was like, I don't know how to, how to, I don't know actually how to experience the like the the weight of this and Oof. what happened was so I, I'm feeling I, I felt like everybody's mother you know I was everybody's mother <laughs> in the whole planet and I I didn't and then I, I but I also so didn't I also didn't have a body and so I had looked to <laughs> my, my partner at the time and I was like I don't have a body but I know I know I have a body and I know that this body has to pee really bad, but I can't move my body. And so he <laughs> like picked me up and carried me up into the house and like literally sat me on the toilet, like because I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't body, like I couldn't. You, and that's not like it wasn't like a scary thing. I just was like so in this other space that I just like wasn't like <laughs> able to move. Like moving didn't feel right. I just was in this like massive like brain, I don't know, fucking space. Yeah. It was weird. Anyway. And so then he like carries me back down. And meanwhile I'm seeing like the entire animal kingdom and like the towel that was on the floor. I was just like, whoa. <laughs> right? Stuff like that. <laughs> just like everything's there. Why is it so good? <laughs> so mushroomy. And then um and then so he brought me back down and I, I had at that point I started crying about my mom. I was like, my mom is dying. And I was like, just like weeping. Aww. And I was just like crying. It was really like processing all those feelings. And it was very much this thought like of how, how can I be a mother if I don't have a mother? Like it was this like roundabout thought that, that kept rolling through my mm. head, you know? And, and I, um, and so I'm crying and my partner had he had he had laid me down on the deck in the midst and there was all these other people there were like six or seven other people and he goes hey guys emily's having a really hard time i think she could really use some like love or whatever and he laid me down <laughs> this was insane um what what happened to me because everybody what 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 i think happened was everybody just like was leaning over me and like caressing me and like reassuring me but what i was experiencing was that everybody's like my child, right? And I was recognizing that they were like hungry and I needed to feed them. But all I had left to give was my own body. And so what I was experiencing was everybody was leaning over me and I was like seeing my like them pulling parts of my body off and like consuming my body. How have I not heard this? I've not told you this. (laughs) What no, dude, this is fucking wild. I'm surprised this is a po- come. You come out with a po- thinking this is a positive experience. This sounds well, a little freaky at this point. Uh, it gets it gets there. Right, this moment was kind of freaky, and it's freaky to tell it. But when I was experiencing it, I felt like I was realizing 
the epitome, like the epitome of my potential as a mother. Like this was the greatest sacrifice that I could make is giving my body for my children to sustain them. So I felt like really in alignment <laughs> that my children were like eating my body. And so that like that was happening. <laughs> and I, God, I, and I, so ran, <laughs> I was like at peace with it. I was, I yeah. was like, I get it. Like, but you know, when you're telling a mushroom story and it was so real for yeah. you, but like you're hearing it and you're like, I was so in alignment. Oh I'm sorry. So I don't, for anybody who listens to this who's never done psychedelics, they're going to be like, mm. <laughs> I don't oh, know. Yeah, like, what? And it's probably sounds scary, but like once yeah. you've done it, it just sounds like, I don't know. Like to me, it sounds like, oh, that must have been what needed that to happen. Sense. That's like, yeah. well, that makes sense. Totally. Yeah. But also, do you hear the words coming out of your mouth? <laughs> I know. It was wild. And I'm trying to articulate it as best as I can. No, you're doing it was a like, great job. I just love it. <laughs> so I remember like they finished eating me and I didn't have like a, a body anymore, even though I didn't really feel like I had one before, but I definitely <laughs> didn't have a body. And I was just, and I felt my third eye actually. I was like this floating. The only way I can describe it is I felt like I was like an eternal memory. Like I was like a memory of mother and everybody remembered me and like what I gave. Whoa. And why, how they're like, how they're like here because of like my sacrifice. And I just was like this recollection that just was floating around. And then that's all it was for the rest of the time. It was just this like sitting in that feeling. And like afterwards, I remember everybody was like processing their experiences and people were asking me what happened. And I was like, I don't know how to really like explain what happened to me, but I died. I'm dead. I died. I'm dead. <laughs> like I <laughs> faced my own me. death. <laughs> Did you tell them that they ate you? Yeah. Well, I know I told my partner. I don't know if I told all like the other people. Um, thankfully, he wasn't one of the ones eating me, which might have been like really crazy for me. But um, everybody else ate me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So it was much. nuts. And so anyway, yeah. I did come out of that feeling one really connected to this idea of like being a mother and that it was something inherent to me, whether or not my mother was on planet earth, that Ooh, it was like, yeah, an, resolved that. Yeah. Right? It was like an energy that I embodied mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. like, like how it was almost like how powerful like I am as a mother and what I have to give to the world is like so mm -hmm. necessary to like nurture the world and um and mm -hmm. I also feel like I kind of face my own death in some ways and like the fear of death I kind of like it didn't feel it wasn't scary like I yeah. know I wasn't really Super dying common but with psychedelics yeah I, I just, just to didn't face feel, your death and then to realize it's not scary it's not anymore. scary it felt normal it felt like it mm -hmm. felt like just another part of being a human. And so, but it took me, I remember it took me like a long while to really truly like process that experience. Um, I don't think I did mushrooms again for like many, many, many months after that. Cause I just like really had to distill it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was glad I had a safe, like I was really in a safe place. I was with people who really cared about right. me. I, I was, it was more like there was like some, it was more like ceremonial and intentional. I like, I cannot imagine being like at a party or, you know, that's like all my early experiences. Like, I feel like that where I would have like lost <laughs> my mind. I, I would have lost my mind. So, but so I'm, no I feel good. really grateful. I feel like it was a very impactful experience and I do feel really grateful for it. Um, ultimately, mm -hmm. I'm glad I had it. Yeah. Yeah, that was my first yeah. go. <laughs> Damn, that's so nice that that was your first go. Yeah. Because all of my early experiences, I mean, okay, so let's see. In my entire life, I think I've probably done psychedelics maybe like five times. Mm -hmm. But they're all such like intense, profound like experiences yeah. in their own way. I really only had one that was like positive, I'd say. The other ones weren't negative, but they were usually in like a party setting in college. Mm -hmm. We were also drinking. I had no concept of set and setting, which is like the importance of like taking psychedelics in like a safe place mm -hmm. <laughs> and like also setting some intentions beforehand, maybe like with your thoughts so that you can kind of like, because you can kind of direct it a little bit. 
um like you do it's like you you have to surrender but then like you also have some control but like that concept wasn't explained to me so without that you're just like I don't know the first time I did uh, I just remember I think I did acid once and then was like no thank you and only did mushrooms after that and I just remember uh, like I have a couple of memories from all of them one because they were all fairly similar it was often in a party or at a concert. Ugh, oh my god! Not the so I know. Much. Like, yeah. I just didn't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I remember one of the times being like, "Will this ever end? Have I actually like snapped and like lost yeah. my mind totally. and like being kind of scared?" Oh, man. Also, lesson I learned is fucking bathrooms are the worst. Don't look at yourself in the mirror. Don't do that. <laughs> Ah! like I can't tell you like twice I looked in the mirror and I was like oh no (laughs) that's a really common thing yeah like that's a common thing that's like a known thing but nobody told me that I figured that shit out on my own and I was like oh mirrors are not fun (laughs) I basically like through the first few times I did mushrooms had to like do a process of elimination of like shit you don't do why how come nobody told me Mm -hmm. bathrooms also I don't know what it is about being in like Especially because all the times I was in bathrooms, it was never in my own bathroom. It was always, mm. like, in a public bathroom. Oh, no. <sighs> or, like... Those are already horrifying. <laughs> no, and it's just, like, oh, the worst. The absolute worst. One of my favorite, like, unfortunate <laughs> ones was I was at a music festival that was, like, at the beach. It was called Hangout Fest, and it was Gulf Shores, Alabama. Yeah. So it was, like, at on the beach like in the sand but it was like fen- you were fenced off from the ocean because it's a music festival it was mm-hmm. huge did a bunch of mushrooms and immediately was just like why are we fenced off from the ocean <laughs> this <is laughs> like wrong. this is this is wrong <laughs> and then just like seeing people who were super drunk like that's also like really uncomfortable mm-hmm. when you're like tripping because it's just like so the opposite of like where your mind wants to go which is like really connecting with people and feeling like Mm. grounded into the earth and then you see somebody just like out of their mind drunk and you're like oh like are you okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) like so I immediately just like didn't say goodbye to my friends and just like left the like fairgrounds and went and swam in the ocean by myself Mm. for like two hours and that was lovely Mm -hmm. so I could like hear the music but I was like swimming in the ocean I was like yeah much better (laughs) this is how it was meant to be Mm. but that was like when I started figuring out I was like okay I don't like doing it at night I like doing it during the day I like doing it um when there's like nature and like gorgeous like nature around but like all this I had to figure out on my own (laughs) and so I really like didn't do them for a long time especially when I stopped drinking I stopped doing like all drugs and then um I was, I was really scared to do them again because kind of in recovery, there's like a, you know, you're not sober unless you like don't do anything, right? Mm-hmm. But I like was in Bali and so it had been, by that point, it had been years since I had done mushrooms because I think the last time I did it was probably at Hangout Fest, which had been maybe like seven years prior, five, seven, wow, I don't know, yeah. a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just like told, I was like psychedelics are not my thing. Mm-hmm. Um But I was in Bali and I was with this group of people who I met doing acro. So like that's a vibe. Acro people are a particular type of people. Mm -hmm. They're just like, I don't know, kind of like yogi-ish people. Very like, like, you know, I would say generally pretty kind, really into connection. Mm -hmm. Um, And (laughs) so anyway, they were like, we do this thing where we go to this private, like the secret beach and we do mushrooms. And I was like, "Ah, I really want to come and we do acro. I was like, really want to come, probably not going to do mushrooms. Cool. No pressure. So I drive with them like two hours to this like beach. First of all, it's like the secluded cove. It's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And then there's these like little families that are uh, m- like make food, I guess, like for people who are visiting the beach. But like at sundown, people left. Okay. And then that is when, like, they had become friends with one of the families there. And so they made these, like, big mushroom omelets. Oh, wow. Where it was, like, omelets with the mushrooms baked in and, like, cut them up and, like, were, like, passing them out. Wow. And I was just, like, at one, one of the uh, guys there was also, I guess, like, sober in recovery but, like, pro-psychedelic. This is, like, a thing that really divides the, like, recovery community because yeah. people are, like, it's drug. It's not, like – 
and also I think that for some people it's not safe and I think you have to know that Mm. for me I honestly have never struggled with any substance other than alcohol like even though I definitely experimented in college and stuff with like other party drugs like always they were too intense for me and I like dropped them pretty quick yeah but alcohol me not friends anyway very scared to do mushrooms because of like all the recovery that's in my brain and he was like so not pressuring me but he was like to, I was telling him about my experiences with mushrooms, and he was just like, ugh. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Those sound awful. And I was like, I, I didn't know how, like, bad they were because mm-hmm. I hadn't had a really, like, have positive, positive experience. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I mean, I, it was okay. It was a little uncomfortable, whatever. And then, he, and then he started explaining to me, like, set and setting and, like, setting intentions and doing it in a space where, like, that's all that's happening. All that's happening um and also we were like on this beach and the stars were insane Mm, and just gorgeous and this family was like taking care of us like making sure we had water and we were gonna like spend the night there on these big like cush like lounge chair things anyway and I was like okay I'm gonna do it and so I did it and it was like I mean you remember Mm -hmm. I like (laughs) I called you after just like boo-hooing like I had so many important realizations. It was so impactful. I really feel like that was a massive, like, turning point, like, or mile marker. Life. Yeah. 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 No, for sure. I actually, like, would love to hear your, like, um, what you remember of it. Because, well, real quick, I'll just say that in my experience of it, I just have been struggling and, like, a lot of, with a lot of things. I had a relationship that was, like, needed to come to an end but, like, was being sloppy, like, back and forth as they sometimes do. Really struggling with some of the relationships in my family, being, like, really angry at just, like, parents and things and and also just, like, being so filled with anxiety. And basically, like the like, the pinnacle point of my trip was, first of all, just, like, sharing these realizations out loud with these like gorgeous people them like just saying like really kind loving things but also like having an experience just with myself as well Mm. and then the like universe like Mm. came down and like put its hands like on my cheeks (laughs) and was just like you're doing great like you are doing such a good job like you try so hard (laughs) I can like cry anytime I think about this because it was just basically like I felt like I had been fighting and working really hard and like feeling like nothing was like getting better and just like shitting on myself all the time and it was just like I don't know it was just kind of like a massive release for me to just Mm -hmm. realize that like I'm doing the fucking best I can (laughs) yeah and it's like it is there is like things are happening I don't know um and then it like released I immediately like was released from that relationship I immediately had like massive empathetic growth for like people in my family Mm -hmm. and just like my anxiety levels just like plummeted it was insane yeah and then the fun stuff was just like the Milky Way was fire. Uh, yeah. I was playing all really the hot music, that night. and I had <laughs> yeah. I had really, really great music selection. I must say, I don't know. And so I was telling them that I had a secret dream to be a DJ, which I definitely do, and I had never told anyone that before. And so all night they were calling me DJ Sarah, oh and I was just God. like playing music, and everybody was like, "Oh, this song is so good." <laughs> I love that so much. And we just, like, laid in, like, a puddle, like, towards the end of it all. And, like, we're, I don't know. It was just, like, so lovely and so nice. Saw the animals. That's, like, a thing. Uh-huh. The had animal a, Had kingdom. a little phase where you see, yeah. you see the whole animal yeah, kingdom. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. This is so cool. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I have to say, one of the things that was really important for me was the idea of surrender which I didn't know before and I would resist it in other like experiences. Um, and he, the guy who had like kind of walked me through this or whatever, he ex- like explained that to me. And I swear to God, I will report back after I have a baby. But when I read about having a baby, <laughs> I'm like, it sounds like a trip. <laughs> Cause they always start talking about like how you have to surrender and stuff like that. And I like, I have this sneaking suspicion that that mushroom trip, has like set me up to like help me have a baby Ooh, in a I really weird that. way. 
I love yeah. that though. And I've never said that out loud before, but I've been reading all these like birthing books and uh-huh. I'm like, it sounds like tripping. Yeah. <laughs> like, where you just like have a point of surrender and you have to know that you're like held and it's going to be okay or you have to like get yourself there anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. And then it's just like you're fucking like on a ride. Yeah. And that is like. I don't know. I, like I said, I'll report back. I actually but really it's love It's been on that, my mind though. a lot yeah. lately and actually why I wanted to talk about psychedelics oh, today because nice. I kind of wanted to drop that. Was like, drop mm-hmm. that juicy mm-hmm. bit. Oh. I just wanted to – anyway, so yeah. Uh, I, I do – And I, so it's like one of the top three most important experiences yeah. that's ever happened in my life. Like no oh, doubt gosh. about it. It changed my life for the better in so mm-hmm. many ways. I feel like I remember it was like – the, it was like the universe gave you permission to just mm-hmm. like go easy on yourself in mm-hmm. like a way that you'd never had before. And I think as soon as that tension kind of released, it just created all this space, all the space for mm-hmm. empathy, all the space for like saying no to the things that were no's and yes to the things that mm-hmm. were yeses. And I remember it's it just so was like, true. it like started you on like this really rapid, like, just like kind of transformation and it just like spilled out into everything. Um, so powerful. Ugh. And I love yeah. that idea. That's how it of felt. Like, yeah. I love that idea of like the surrender and the surrender and birth. Like it's very, I, I never made that correlation before, but there is like, those are two really great examples of like surrendering t- and trusting, you know, like yeah, what is happening. In like a massive mm-hmm. way. Yeah. That's like, terrifying yeah because it is yeah. I mean even like when I was doing you know that moment in time I remember it so vividly when I had to like surrender to the mushrooms it was like a choice and I remember being like ah fuck yeah this is that thing I have to choose to surrender mm-hmm. but I'm really scared <laughs> and I was just like sitting there like with this decision like in my hands like do I want to do it or and then I just was like fuck it and then it was like so much better from that point on Mm -hmm. um yeah it's really like anytime I talk about that situation it like brings me to tears still Mm -hmm. and it's been five years yeah like those those experiences like they don't like for me it's the the experience that I had with DMT that's the one that for me I felt like was really, I mean, the, my mushroom trip was like incredibly powerful. Um, but it was, it definitely was like my, like kind of like life changing one. Uh, Ooh, tell was us about that. that one. Should, should I do it now or should we do like a part two? What do you think? Uh, I could dive uh, in. You want let's to do, do part two. Part two? Let's do All part right. two. Yeah. <laughs> Leaving hey. you guys suspended and hanging until next week. Especially because wow. DMT, like, that's, that one has, like, more of a stigma than mushrooms. You yeah, know what I mean? that's even so more. Because mushrooms is like, it grows out of the ground. DMT is a little bit more. It looks cute. <laughs> There's cartoons of it. And DMT is like, whoa. <laughs> I know. I, I just know. think of, like, oh, God, fractals. I've never done DMT, mm-hmm. so. I'm scared. I'm mm-hmm. scared. I'm still, like, kind of scared of psychedelics. Like, I haven't done any psychedelics since that mushroom trip, I, and it's been, like, Listen, like, I am kind of, like, too. I had so many really, really intense, like, I haven't done psychedelics in three, four years, probably. I want, me and yeah. you haven't done mushrooms together. We're gonna do that one of these days. Me and you. Definitely. We'll have a great time. Definitely. We'll record a podcast after yeah (laughs) (laughs) during can you imagine (laughs) the animal kingdom people will be like what the fuck are they talking (laughs) about one of the things you can't have is like you can't fucking look at your phone a computer technology technology is real weird it's real weird but I guess to kind of like wrap it up I don't know it it definitely is like one of those things you have to feel really like Mm. you know you need to feel it's like a decision you need you need to make for yourself like if that's something that feels good Mm -hmm. to you and know yourself if you're someone that like you can't like release and surrender control like mushrooms might not be the thing for you right now you know and like really Mm -mm. just like know yourself and and like like you were sharing sarah like the importance of the people that you're around the intentions you set it's everything your surroundings can be the difference it's not a party drug yeah, between something that's like truly like spiritually like revolutionary or something that is like really uncomfortable and kind of difficult. So um mm-hmm. yeah. 
So. Yeah. No, that was a good little like little ribbon yeah. on little bow. around the, the around the conversation. Oh, I'm excited to dig into mm. part two. I want to hear about D and T. Mm. Okay. Okay. Bye, guys. Till next time. Bye.